Hey everybody, Dr. B here, Dr. B360. Let's get started. What is the difference between heroin and fentanyl? And how is that related to methadone and suboxone? And why that matters? Why it matters for you to understand substance abuse and why it matters for you to understand what is our failures or part of it part of the reason of our failures in truly getting a hold of the uh, fentanyl crisis uh, at this point and uh, uh, um, ever increasing overdose deaths now I know there's dips ups and downs but another video I will discuss why that is unacceptable at this point this far into the opiate epidemic so You already know that fentanyl is a lot more potent, quote unquote, and more deadly than heroin. You know that. And you already probably know that fentanyl is a lot more addictive. And maybe that means potent for you. I don't know. But you do know that it's a much stronger substance and it's much more addictive than heroin, oxys, or any other pills or manufactured opiates great and there's quite a bit about fentanyl that that fact gives us insight in some of the problems in terms of us being able to get a hold of and manage substance abuse patients opiate addicts uh, uh, fentanyl addicts and why we can't get them on medication assisted treatment. Incidentally, in the link below, I do have an older fentanyl video that is a long descriptive evaluation of fentanyl that you probably won't see anywhere else. And I think it's distilled down in a really positive, strong way for you to understand. But what I'm going to describe right now is more from the user's perspective, and I will translate what that means in terms of getting better treatment outcomes and make some comparison and contrast with methadone and suboxone. In addition, um, I, I, I will slightly start to introduce a new concept, and um, I'm going to hold that for a minute. So, you know. If you were going to talk about the high or the use of heroin and fentanyl, and if you were somebody that has been using both and has a lot of experience with both for a long time, oftentimes you see people, most people nowadays, have moved away from heroin and simply use fentanyl. Besides the logistical reasons for that, namely, you can't really even find any more heroin. And let's set aside the quality of the illicit substances out there, whether heroin or fentanyl, because that is an important point and it contributes a lot to understanding uh, the use of this stuff and treatment. We're going to set all that aside. We're just going to say a user in this kind of um, experimental world and you know most people would say they used to use heroin they've moved on to fentanyl okay <clears throat> you ask them why and uh, they give you a lot of answers and they might say uh, it's a lot more potent it's a lot more addictive fair enough but if you start to dig in what's really going on here and if you ask enough questions and sort of uh, peel back the layers of what's really going on, you will probably get most patients to say something like this. Look, heroin is actually a much better high. With fentanyl, I, I know it's a lot more potent and addicting but it's not as good of a high. In addition, I can't stop. 
let's set aside the fact that let's say you can't even find any heroin but they'll tell you i can't stop in fact i had a patient just a couple of days ago say something almost like this to me you know it's almost like i'm on a hamster wheel and every couple of hours i have to redose and it just goes on and on and on and i just can't get off this stuff but yes heroin is a better high what is he talking about here right well we know it's fentanyl is a lot more potent what does that mean uh, at, at 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 one architectural level it just means it takes a lot less fentanyl to fill that receptor and get to the same plateau as heroin okay that's at one level uh, we also know it's a lot more short acting and theoretically in addiction treatment uh, something that is a lot more short acting fast on fast off has a lot more abuse potential and it changes receptor architectures in the long run and in the short run okay we know that psychologically what the patient is really telling you is that look from the moment i take in the substance let's say heroin the zero to 60 with fentanyl zero to 60 is two seconds and in between that zero to 60 let's call the 60 your not off point right that dangerous place you get to you not off your respiratory drive starts to go down in there there is a sweet spot that is searched for by someone who uses regularly and um, you know it, it's that place that you want to be i challenge you most addicts of course there's some exceptions will tell you that they go right by that sweet spot and get to 60 the danger zone the not off point okay it's almost like getting too close to the sun if you are looking for a planet and its star and looking for that sort of goldilocks zone where you want to be at to sustain life well with the opiate you know there's a goldilocks zone right that they want to be at let's just give them the same name, zone a name for now and i'll get back to this later euphoria right it's that comfort zone all right with heroin that zero to 60 it has a long stop off at that goldilocks zone at that euphoria zone at that place you want to be in addition when you get to 60 that dangerous ugly not off zone that is extremely close to the sun when you get there it is not as frightening as uh, uh, the realizing the personalizing uh, uh, dehumanizing and disconnected as it is with fentanyl and then when you wake up from your fentanyl not off zone you immediately need to redose that has to do with the potency with heroin that is not the case okay so we have some psychological affective emotional uh description of this and we can call that goldilocks zone that euphoria that is such a taboo word in addiction abuse use abuse addiction treatment substance abuse and so forth we're going to get back to addressing the issue with that term euphoria and it's just sort of a placeholder right now that Goldilocks zone that an opiate user wants to get to with fentanyl you get there pass it go straight into the sun with heroin it is a pause the potency makes it so they just can't stop the fentanyl and they need redosing faster and faster and faster you might say great so what well 
I think in substance abuse and addiction treatment, we need to look at the value of that Goldilocks zone, quote unquote, euphoria. Why? Because people are dying overdosing on fentanyl. What role does Suboxone play? One tool in our toolbox of arsenal in substance abuse treatment and MAT for opiates. And we should look at methadone, another tool. These two, let's start off with Suboxone. The problem with Suboxone is that it is relatively wonderful in its stability and maintaining people with their cravings and withdrawal issues and gives some elevation in mood at some baseline level. Forget what the pain patients out there are saying about euphoria, addiction, uh, uh, physiological dependence. Um, they don't have any idea of what you're ta they're talking about. These are much more complex concepts and they seem to muddy the waters. Point is, Suboxone doesn't really have that euphoric component. Now let's go to methadone. I've always been a fan and an advocate of both of these drugs, but over the years, I would lean towards Suboxone for a variety of reasons. It's safer and logistically it's much easier to manage. And I was always much more pro towards Suboxone than methadone and always thought that, yes, there is a number of people nowadays still that would benefit on being on methadone versus Suboxone. I would say now with the fentanyl crisis, and it's been a few years now, a lot more people would probably benefit of trying to get on methadone versus Suboxone simply for the fact, A, you don't have to deal with the withdrawals and getting to a place of avoiding precipitated withdrawals that you do with Suboxone because it is an agonist antagonist. B, being a full agonist, it's not a great high methadone, right? But whatever it is, wherever it is on that spectrum, and again, I'm going to have a much more in-depth video on this and I've been building on this issue, it is better than Suboxone. If that is true, because fentanyl patients have a harder time getting on Suboxone and staying on it, simply because the potency of fentanyl and it passes that euphoric index so rapidly where patients can't even think about going back to heroin, that euphoric space, that Goldilocks zone matters. And methadone is much better than Suboxone. Let me recap this, okay? Using fentanyl, let's dismiss the quality of it and let's dismiss the fact that heroin's probably not even available anymore. If it was, using fentanyl, even though an addict will tell you, well, yes, heroin is a much better high, it's because there's that zone they want to get into. We can call it the Goldilocks zone. And also, it's much safer at the end of the high, that place you reach, which we'll call the, call the not off zone. It's also safer. And you don't need to redose all the time. And so the high is actually better. With fentanyl, you fly right by that euphoria, high, Goldilocks zone and go immediately to the nod off dangerous zone, and it's a very different nod off than heroin, and you immediately need to redose and redose and redose, needing the drug but never getting any, if I dare say, the satisfaction that the addict craves. This, uh, and again, I'm using this language right now to get the point across. When you translate this into the difficulty we have on getting people onto MAT, which really is only Suboxone and Methadone, Suboxone is going to have a higher failure rate of getting people on and keeping them on. 
Getting them on is difficult because the withdrawals of fentanyl are so painful, so much more painful, they're all painful, uh, then, uh, uh, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that as much so you can recruit the receptors and get them on methadone much easier than the suboxone. And number two, methadone is not generally a great high, a great euphoria, or great Goldilocks zone, but compared to suboxone, it's much better. So you may have a better chance of sustaining more people on methadone than suboxone. And so we should really look at expanding and creating better reach to a, a, a wider arsenal of medication-assisted treatment. And now maybe it makes sense, all of the short videos I've made, and I'll get into each one over time, about pharmaceutical-grade heroin, long-acting morphine, and all of these other drugs that have proven efficacy over years and data across the planet to treat opiate addicts. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. It's free. It helps us a lot. I'm trying to transition over into making a lot more of these and creating a much more robust environment uh, and uh, uh, presenting to you much more stuff. Subscribe. It's free. Giving a like and a comment, whether you like what I say or not, really helps a lot. Otherwise, I will see you soon, and I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Peace.